Hello. 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 Hello, this is Sean with Blade Mate Lawn Care. Welcome to the one year anniversary video for this channel. In the lead up to this, I recently put out a post just seeing if there were anyone who had a few questions about myself or my business and my journey and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I look forward to answering some of these questions. YouTube's a, been a bit of an interesting journey, uh, both personally and professionally. And in, in the second and the latter there, um, just noting that it's completely new, separate industry, I had zero experience using cameras and, and all that sort of stuff, um, let alone interacting with people around the world who, when I first started, I had no idea um, that I would even get 100 subscribers, let alone, um, I think, up to 71,000 now. So I absolutely adore everyone who follows this channel, provides support. And for those who you know, have been following for a while, you would be well aware of how I've been able to tailor my business using this platform. And that was something that I had no idea would even be a possibility in the beginning. However, it's, it's something that I'm absolutely thrilled and over the moon uh, that my business has evolved to the point um, where it's a thing I'm able to do now. And that, that alone is just, it's worth getting out of bed for in the morning, ladies and gents, you know. Um, yeah, and it's not possible without all of you guys who, who support this channel, so thanks heaps. Now there are quite a few questions here, so I may not get through all of them. So I do apologize if you, if you did leave a question or a comment and I wasn't able to address it in this video. Doesn't mean I didn't read it, think about it, acknowledge it in my mind, it just means that I, I won't, won't make it into the video, unfortunately, purely just for time, because looking here, there's 181 comments on this uh, post that I put up, and yeah, that it'll take me quite a while to get through all of them. So here, here's one that pops up uh, quite often. This is from Cummy Kins. Uh, Sean, is it possible to revisit some of the homes you did for free and see how their yards are looking? Um, I, I have done a video. I'll leave the link in the description. It's for two big yards, and they were quite successful videos. And as such, I continue to use the revenue that I earned from those videos to provide ongoing upkeep to those yards for free at no cost to them. Um, obviously, time is a big factor as well. I'm, I'm only one person. Well, I know I have my offside of will. Uh, however, yeah, time is the biggest factor as to why I can't go back and really do all of them for free regularly. Uh, you know, in a perfect world, that'd be great, but I'm restricted by the resources I have. Now this one comes up all the time, so I'll address it to the first one I've seen here, which was asked by Krabby Pants. So there were no doubt a few more in this list that didn't make the video that asked a similar thing. Ever had a close encounter with a snake? And do you beat around the overgrown bushes first to scare off the critters before you mow? And what about spiders? Um, yes, had lots of encounters with critters. I haven't put any snakes in the video. Some people are a bit jittery, and truth be told, I don't think I've actually encountered a snake during one of the times I was filming. Um, they're not as off, they're not as common as you think to, to come across. I've probably come across maybe well half a dozen during a mowing season, and you know mowing season's like six months, so yeah, what's that like one a month? It's not a big strike rate when it comes to encountering dangerous snakes. I do come across a lot of spiders and a lot of lizards. Um, I think with the snakes though, I don't beat around to scare them off. I'm, always, I'm usually a little bit apprehensive when I'm doing my first walk around, just noting that they haven't been disturbed by my equipment and all that stuff yet. Uh, so yeah, that, that's a, I'm always a little bit on edge walking through that long grass initially. However, once I get started with my equipment, the, the sound and the vibrations, they just go the other way. So I don't know where they go <laughs> in the next door neighbor's yard. This one's from Rhiannon Butler. Congrats on a fast and productive year. It has been great watching you transform yards, communities, disadvantaged, and watch us all with a trimmer. So thanks, Rhiannon, that's lovely. Um, only two questions I have. Does anyone get offended by you asking to tidy their yard? And are there enough bloopers for a video yet? Well, I'll start with the bloopers one. Um, but you don't want to see some of my bloopers. If some very Australian language comes out, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> um, no, they don't get offended because I guess it's all in, in the de delivery. Anyone who's seen how I respond to some comments, uh, I've been, it's been suggested that I get triggered easily and this, that and the other. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I also have a different standards of manners when communicating to, to some people. 
Um, I, I don't like bluntness in an approach and I don't appreciate being on the receiving end of bluntness either. As such, when I, pro when I do approach these people, I just knock on the door and go, hey, g'day, how you going? My name's Sean. Um, I've just, just noticed your yard here and I was just, just wondering if you, you'd like somebody to come and take care of this for you at no cost. You know, it'd be fun for me. And from, and that kind of, I don't know, you guys tell me, how did that come across? From where I'm standing, it's, it's pretty inoffensive. It leaves them able to just say no. If they said no, oh, well, you have a nice day then. But 10 times out of 10, I haven't had a single person say no. Um, they're usually, their ears prick straight up, like, oh yeah, you know, what, what's going on? And they're like, well, what's the catch? And I explain how YouTube and Patreon works, and, and then we have a little bit of chat about how I try and, you know, respect their privacy, and I ask them if there's, because they, they always tell me their circumstances, so I get permission from them to add uh, those, you know, segments about their personal life into my videos, if they're comfortable for me to do it. And so yeah, like I said, it comes. It's all in the delivery how you approach the person, and I'm I'm pretty confident in myself that the, the way I do approach it, like how I just demonstrated, it's people aren't offended. Um, yeah, that that's just me. You know, you guys could have just interpreted the way I did that and gone, oh, that's really offensive. It's all subjective, I guess. But personally, I haven't encountered anybody who has been offended by my approach. This is also a common one that I get in the, the comment sections. This is from Barbara Lifty. Is that how you pronounce that, Barbara? Thanks for your comment. Uh, she asks, just want to know why all or almost all backyards have metal panel fences. So that's just a style in Australia. Obviously, we're a, a very large iron producer for the rest of the world, so iron's really cheap here. And so they make steel fences. They're, they're um, very hardy brand. It's called Colorbond. Um, they got this coating on, on top of them as well, and basically they're really cheap and easy to produce and assemble, and they're hardy. They're very, very hardy, and they remain looking new-ish. You know, they might get a little bit of mold or whatever on you know, from the elements, but they, they remain in really good condition for a long time. So that, that's why. This one's from Julie Saunders. She is nearby me, so. She said, hi Sean, is Thornton inside the Novocastrian bubble? So for anyone who doesn't quite understand what that is, Thornton is a suburb where I live and most of the work I do is around Thornton and surrounding suburbs. Uh, and Novocastrian, that's what people from Newcastle call themselves. And Newcastle is the, the big city nearby and that's about 20 minutes, 25 minutes towards the coast that way from where I am. So to answer your question there, Julie, uh, no, I'm not inside the Novocastrian bubble. We are a different government area. So this question come up quite a lot uh, in this post. Many people are curious about my military background, uh, what rank I was, what work I did, you know, where I was posted, that sort of stuff. So I was in the army for 14 years. I discharged in February this year. Um, I was a sergeant when I discharged. My core is Ramey, was Ramey. That's a Royal Australian Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. I was a fitter armament. Now, what the main role of a fitter armament is to, it's basically weapons maintenance. However, we maintain um, all the miscellaneous equipment throughout the army and mechanical equipment. Uh, and it's also obviously the fitter side. I've got my full trade uh, through the army, um, all the metal manufacturing and, and all that sort of stuff, all those qualifications. Um, yeah, so I was posted all around Australia. Um, one of the most high, high profile postings I did was actually not in my trade, it was as a recruiting instructor. And that was that was interesting, that was a, a very big challenge and yeah, and I enjoyed that. So a lot of people might be more familiar with the term drill sergeant or drill instructor or something, and I was the Australian equivalent of that for a couple of years. And that was one of my most recent postings before I discharged. So yeah, I had a pretty diverse uh, career in the, in the Australian Army. Um, yeah. So. Don't have much more to say on it than that. This one's from Earth Trim Gardens. There you go, mate. Uh, I'd love to know what you did to get your channel so successful. I'm just beginning a similar project myself where I want to use this platform to hopefully, eventually provide my garden, gardening service to my community free of charge. First of all, mate, I think that's fantastic that you want to do that. And YouTube's a, a great platform to enable that. And yeah, so 
you know, define success, I guess. Um, when I had a thousand subs, I, th I thought the channel was successful, so I appreciate you even saying that, mate. Um, I, I don't know, I guess I just did the work, made the videos, and I was just very lucky enough to have such an awesome audience that decided they, they liked watching my stuff, and we've kind of gone from there. So yeah, really, really appreciate your, your feedback on my channel. So this one's from Local Lynn. Maybe you could give advice to someone looking to start a new mowing business. A few do's and don'ts. Uh, so, look, I'm not much of a businessman, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'm very low key. I've got a little tiny ute that I get around. I put my you know, push mowers on the back of it and, and go around. Uh, I've always been content just to kind of earn enough to pay the bills. I don't have huge ambitions. Uh, like I said, YouTube's been really, really good because in the sense that it's enabled me to do the work that I actually want to want to do, but it's also taken me out of the sphere of, I guess, what you could describe, you know, regular business in the sense that I'm not, not often chasing clients or invoices and that sort of stuff. I usually kind of break even uh, with my videos and Patreon. Um, you know, some, some months I'll make a little bit more profit than I did the month before, but I found that it kind of balances out to what I would have earned uh, were I taking paying clients, if that makes sense. So like I said, I'm probably not the person to speak to about um, business because my whole model is very, very unorthodox comparative to your regular you know, lawn, lawn care business. However, I think if I'm gonna give advice, get yourself on the social media, Facebook page, Instagram, YouTube channel if, if you want. Um, get your friends and family to like, share, all that stuff. Uh, most people, if they're starting from scratch, you know, the social is the best, best spot to hit it because, you know, there's always people saying, hey, is anyone available to kind of do my lawn? Um, yeah, that, that sort of stuff. And you get a bit of word of mouth grows from there. Uh, also, insurance is a must. Essential. Absolutely essential. So, yeah, just buy yourself a mower, a whipper snipper and a blower. Get out there and get grinding and some money. So this one's from Nancy Brady. How are you going? Uh, do you have a pet? How has COVID affected your business and family? And how do you cope with the heat? And lastly, congratulations. Thanks, Nancy. Um, first of all, do I have a pet? Yes, I do. We have a Shih Tzu, his name is Arnold Shih Tzu Nagger. Here he is. Hey, buddy. Oh. He fluffs, he goes. Hey. You're a bit cute. You're a bit cute, aren't you, buddy? Mm -hmm. Stop fluffing on me. He's really cute. Uh, how has COVID affected your business and family? COVID hasn't really affected my business too much. I've been fortunate that um, in my part of the country, uh, we've been allowed to work, so that, that's been okay. However, from a, a family perspective, Look, obviously it's been difficult. Every, everybody has had cabin fever. Uh, my wife's had to do the homeschooling you know, via, via Zoom and all that sort of stuff. And you know, that gets a little bit long in the tooth doing that day in, day out, especially when you're not a teacher. Um, you know, the, the technology these days for kids is a blessing and a curse. Everyone always talks about how kids are always on their devices and, and how it's bad and this, that and the other. Well, frankly, we would have been lost without our devices for the kids are uh, noting that that they, they've been able to get their social interaction because they're always you know chatting chat to their friends and, and all that sort of stuff otherwise they just wouldn't have had that interaction for nearly three months so i guess that's how i've kind of coped with it as a family this one's from first gen hun there you go hun uh what other kind of interesting stories do you have with wildlife that nest in the backyard and the mama bird getting all upset was really interesting and unusual so she's uh, referencing the, sorry, I think you're a lady. Um, referencing the recent one I did where I was getting attacked by plovers protecting their nest. <laughs> so I've got a funny story for you on that, that same note. Um, this is actually my wife's story, okay? So we were posted in Darwin, that's in the Northern Territory for most of our career. And in the last 10 years or so, the Marines from, you know, the US Marines have started rotating their for about six months of the year. Um, now, some of those young blokes weren't really accustomed 
to being attacked in the street by animals when they came out for a jog. So, yeah, Claire was driving past one day and there was this poor kid, this young bloke, he was only like 19 or 20, you know, young marine. <laughs> he was curled up in a ball with these two plovers, not unlike what you saw in that video I did recently, just dive bombing and he didn't know what to do. He was just like, oh, you know, just having a bad time. <laughs> it's a little bit funny. Anyway, so she kind of pulled up, put the window down and said, oi, come get in the car, mate. <laughs> he, he ran over to the car and yeah, so she rescued him from a bunch of plovers and I think that's probably one of the funniest stories that I've got for you. This is from Tweedle Games Swenson. There you go, mate. Uh, do you ever get scared of spiders or bees on the job? Well, spoken about spiders, short answer is for the spiders, yes, absolutely. Uh, one video in particular, I've nearly grabbed a big redback nest. Um, the redback was about that big. If anyone doesn't know what a redback spider is, it's an Australian black widow. And you're very venomous, very venomous, not aggressive, but you know, they'll do some damage if they bite you. Um, the silly me, complacency, don't wear gloves as much as I should, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm, but that said, I'm always on the lookout for spiders because you know, I've just kind of I've grown up knowing where I can expect to see them, or you know, um, and the funnel webs which actually burrow in the ground. I'm, I'm most prominently keep my eyes down looking for any sort of sign of that, and I always do that. Um, well, I won't say always. Sometimes I'm complacent, but you know. Uh, as for the bees. I've never been stung by bees on the job. I love bees. They're just sweet. They're the bloody teddy bears of the you know the insect world. Um, however, wasps. I get stung by wasps so often, so often. They're in. They're, they make their nests in like hedges or shrubs or anything. If I, you don't even need to disturb their nest. You just got to go near them, and they'll just come at you. And all of a sudden, I'll feel a sharp sting in somewhere, usually on my skin, my neck or something, and then I'm like, oh. And I'll grab it and you can feel it buzzing and it's like almost feels like a crunchy leaf and like this is just awful and you kind of look up and you see them and they're everywhere and they chase you they don't they're, they're angry bloody things these wasps they, they chase you you gotta run away so after that happens on a job I kind of make a mental note of where it is and I do my best to stay back from that area um, but I've got to get in there anyway so it just makes it a challenge we'll leave it at that this one's from Pretty Brown Eyes. How you going, Dale? Um, would love some footage or recording of the people whom you have helped and how they enjoy their lawns after the massive cleanup. Now, I do get asked this one quite often. People would like to see the reactions uh, from the, the people that I do the work for. However, I look, honestly, I first and foremost, I didn't initially used to ask them for privacy reasons. Um, but after several requests, you know, similar to this one, I have in fact asked and only two people have asked actually and, and they both said no and i fully respect that i can understand that they, they don't want to um you know have, have to speak to a camera or have their faces revealed and all that, and that that's perfectly understandable however i also um i always ask for their permission to, to share their story like i said so they, they give me that without having to you know i can be their conduit you know provide their message on their behalf and yeah, they don't have to show their face, so that's why I do it like that. So this one's from Right in the Friggin' Eye. I like that name, good one. Hi Sean, since the last video when you got a mulching blade for that weed eater because everyone was telling you to get one, well, I have a question. What are your top three things you learned about lawn care when you, sorry, and where you just face palmed and thought, I can't believe I didn't find this out sooner. So, top three. Um, definitely one of the people in the comments section um, that, and I've had a lot of feedback saying that people started doing it this way as a result of watching me do it whereas I, and I acknowledge I learned from someone in the comments the way I hold my whipper snipper where it's kind of vertical and I, I, I hold the you know the, the, the shaft of the whip snipper a little bit further down yes get your minds out of your gutter I, I fully understand what I just said um, yeah, so that has, it's changed the way I, I, I do my edges. The, the control it's given, it gives you when you work that way and the confidence it's given me to use the whipper snipper to edge pristine lawns, um, was that, that was one of the best pieces of advice I've ever had. 
Another one was, if you watch back to my early videos when I first used side discharge mowers, a couple of my victors, never used one before, ever. Had no idea what I was doing. Um, and people were just becoming irate with me for the my technique. I was just going up and down and going over all the long clippings. It didn't register on my anywhere in my grid square um, that that was an issue, just noting that my two strokes are pretty powerful and we're just smashing through it. Uh, however, the common theme was there that I'll, it makes it hard for yourself to go over the stuff that you've already cut. You should go up the middle and then kind of work around the sides. And that's another piece of advice that I've been implementing and you'll notice I've incorporated that into my work when I use my side, side discharge mowers, well, as best as I can anyway. From a business perspective, the best advice I've received and can give is know your worth. You know, people think that you know, lawn care, some prices are rip-offs and they're not gonna pay more than $40, and that's $40 Australian, which is, I don't know, 25 bucks US or something. I don't know, do the maths. Um, yeah, pe people don't fully understand the costs involved in running a lawn care business. In Australia, any any dollar you earn, like immediately take almost a third of that straight off for tax. And so, you know, if you pay, if you charge $100, yeah, you're getting, 30, you're getting $70 type thing. And then you have your insurances, you have your fuel, your maintenance of your equipment, and all these things chip into it. Not to mention if you have waste removal every single time I do a tip run, cost me money. Um, and hence why it's so important to know your worth. And when people try and haggle you, I don't, I don't allow myself to get haggled. If someone says to me, oh, but the last guy did it for $10 less, my response now is, well, he, he sounds cheap. Why don't you call him? They usually respond with, well, I don't, his, his work's no good. I'm like, well, you pay peanuts, you get monkeys, don't you? So know your worth. Uh, don't allow yourself to be haggled. And yeah, this one's from Chris Hayes. Hey, I'm Chris. Uh, first off, gonna say love your videos. Thanks, Chris, much appreciated, mate. Uh, I'm curious as to why you seem to prefer two strokes over a four stroke. Uh, also, can you talk on the differences between the types of grass between here and the States? and those of Australia, between here and the States. So I don't quite understand how you've worded that, mate. Are you, I'm gonna assume you're asking the differences between the grass in the US and in Australia. Uh, I'll get to that one in a sec. I'll start with the first question. Why do I prefer two strokes over four strokes? Quite simply, power to weight. You know, they, they don't bog, and if they, yeah, they don't stall. The four strokes, they just go through long stuff and just get stuck. So obviously the piston going up and down in a Two stroke, you know, twice as often, or the spark hitting it twice as often as that in a four stroke, it's quite simply more powerful and it bogs down less. And yeah, that's why I like them more. Well, as for the differences between grass in the US and here, I'll just let this excerpt from my pr previous video speak for itself. Have a look here. That's it's almost like a spider web, it's just this big, sticky, not sticky, but firm, dense. A clump of you know thatchy long stuff like you couldn't drag your foot through there I watch a lot of American YouTube channels absolutely love the lawn care industry love watching the transformation don't care if it's in England New Zealand um, I've, I've, bloody, I've watched one from Japan uh, obviously the US everywhere Australia New, yeah I, I really enjoy it um, and big difference between Australian and particularly the US and the UK and the Northern Hemisphere your grass doesn't go brown underneath. Uh, in Australia, the varieties, mainly Kaikuyu and Cooch, they're huge around here. They go very brown underneath um, and all the green goes to the top. Now, the reason for that is it's, it's a drought resistant quality, whereas the plant saves energy and water by only having the more healthy green parts and chlorophyll at the top and everything underneath just kind of gets shut down. And it's really just there as a mechanism to connect the green part to the roots. Uh, whereas I've noticed in those other countries, it's green all the way down. You know, I'm so jealous of that. It's not dead, it's not thatchy. You're gonna run your finger through it, you know, like a nice bloody combed hair. That's, that's what it looks like to me. And it looks like it would be so much easier to mow and so fun to mow. And um, some lawns I've, I've done that are like that. You know, not all the varieties of Kaikuyu and Cooch, but for the really overgrown ones, that's for the most part, that's what they are. So yeah, to answer that question, I'm pretty sure that's the biggest difference I've noticed, the fact that you don't have that big 
clump of thatch and you can just, it's just grass from top to bottom. Bill Bearden. <clears throat> to the folks who make these videos, it's probably very obvious, but for those who may not know, can you please explain the advantage of walking backwards as you do your edging? So, just you're gonna have to watch this next bit. When I go that way, um, the trimmer head's spinning that way, which means everything kind of gets thrown that way, which is behind me. If I were to go forward into that, the trim is still spinning anti-clockwise, but it'll kind of, I don't know, the forces of me going that way and the trimmer head going that way, it means that the debris doesn't get tossed away. It kind of just gets stuck in the edge there. I'll show you what I mean. See how if you look there, you'll notice very little debris in the area that I've just gone. Now watch this. And see how a lot of this crap just kind of got stuck there. Nah. It was over there. It was like the smallest amount, and that was really just because it was super long. Most of it goes that way behind me before I'm going. Uh, also, I found that when walking forward, just the actual angle of the trimmer head, um, it's a little bit more difficult to control. And I find myself digging into the ground more often than I would going backwards. G'day, so I'm back. I had to pause the video, and I'm back here to finish it. Just got back from work. Uh, I was actually filming my next grass cutting video. Alrighty, so continuing where we left off. This one's from Damien Quinn. How are you, Damien? He goes, I would love to know more about your backstory with work. I often fantasize of driving a ride on mower in straight lines all day at my local park as a job to escape the stress, responsibility, blame, and micromanaging. I'll tell you right now, mate, that is a dream, and that right there is exactly why I'm in this line of work. Um, it's just such a pleasure to do. Uh, then he continues, plus getting that feeling of accomplishment and seeing the result of your hard work. It looks like you've actually gone ahead and made that happen. Would love to know how you got there. Cheers. Thanks, Damien. Look, mate, everything you just said, 100% uh, the reason why I got in this work. So I do have previous videos where I've talked about this. Of course, I'll reiterate. So when I was working as a recruiting instructor, I remember driving to work and seeing all the groundskeepers around base um, and they just, it just looked like such a liberating job, you know, um, exactly as Damien described, you know, they were, they were mowing, um, they were outside, I think when I saw them, they were, they were having their smoke over break, drinking iced coffees and having a chat and all that. It just looked like such a liberating and good job. And like I said, everything Damien just said, it, it appealed to me so much because um, I was, you know, going for me third 18 hour day in a row type thing. And... You know, the job was, it was a very rewarding job training new soldiers, but it was very taxing mentally. And I remember that specific moment in time thinking, I want their job. And that kind of planted a seed for me. And two years later, in 2019, I went and did exactly that. I started a small business, um, obviously part-time, I was still in the army. And yeah, and my wife gave me some good advice, which was don't go and buy like an established business or anything. Don't buy stupid amounts of equipment. Start at the bottom, work your way up. Um, and if you don't like it in 12 months, well then you have minimal overheads and you can just, you know, sell up, move on. You've tried it, so be it. Fortunately, I did try it, I did love it, and I've continued doing it since discharge. And yeah, that's pretty much that in a nutshell. So here's one, this is from Amy Bracey. G'day Amy. Hey, I have a question. What is the council and what part do they play? I'm in the US, are the, are the homes rentals or owned by them? All right, so my understanding of how the US operates, you have your counties and you know, the county has their own administration that kind of oversee, you know, all the sanitation and, and I don't know, whatnot, you know, all that sort of stuff, infrastructure around around town you know they, they manage that local area the council that's our equivalent to the county and yeah 
Simple as that, really. So no, they don't own, own or rent the houses. They're just the local government. Now this one cracks me up a bit. So this is from damn old guy. You don't look old, mate. You don't look old. You don't look a bloody day over 40. Um, do Aussies really like Vegemite or is it just a joke to get other people to try it? <laughs> uh, look, Australians are quite partial to a stitch up. I'm not gonna tell you what we do like to stitch people up about because I, I don't want to ruin the joke for other Aussies. Uh, however, Vegemite, no, absolutely, we, uh, that is a staple, love it. I, I was raised on it, I still have it once or twice a week on my toast in the morning, a bit of butter um, melts into the Vegemite. You, you know, it's one of those things, if you're raised with it, you like it, you know? It's not, ev not everyone appreciates it at first when they have it. Um, people who haven't had it ever and try it as an adult for the first time will probably think, what is this salty crap that you put on your toast? Uh, but yeah, when you're raised with it, it's just something that you really like and it's really good for you. You know, it's full of vitamin B and yeah, puts a, puts a rose in every cheek. This one's from Clint Curtis, Excelsior word. So this is a good question. This is from Raymond Stevens. Um, yeah, I got one as a lawn care specialist myself. Uh, how do you make money during winter? Do you also do other jobs aside to lawn care or do you save as you go? So you have it for the cold months. Um, so in winter time, I, I, I'm able to continue mowing. It just means that my fortnightly, so no one knows what that means, that's every two weeks, um, they turn into once every month that I'll go and mow. So I'll still do my entire clientele. It just slows down during winter. Um, and that's when we focus on a lot more clean up jobs and, and people want their yards cleaned up and that sort of stuff. And Because it, it doesn't snow here. In my particular region, we don't get huge frosts it's very temperate you know it's kind of um yeah it's above where it, where it's too cold and it's below where it's too hot on, on the map so yeah i can still work but yeah obviously spring through summer is peak mowing season where you know we earn most of the money this is from stay and your lane i would like to know if you feel the good you have been doing for people with your service with your service is being paid back by good in your everyday life um, it seems by association with some, some people, either I know personally or follow on YouTube, doing good deeds is returned to them, and I'm not saying anyone does good to get good, but just curiosity as to if you have seen it personally. So if I interpret that correctly, the simple question is, do I feel good as a result? And do I get good things happen to me as a result of the work I do? Well, first and foremost, absolutely I feel good. That's the whole reason I do it. It's um, when I discharged, I kind of still had that bug where I wanted to serve. You know, when I was in the military, that's, that's the job. You're, you're servant to your country. Um, I've always enjoyed that about the, wearing the uniform. And I don't wear the uniform anymore and I found myself kind of twiddling my thumbs, I guess. Feeling like I could be doing a little bit more with my time. Um, and yeah, so I found myself doing a few freebies around town. Um, and then obviously the, the YouTube channel happened. And I did my first freebie then and I, I got an overwhelmingly positive response when I did my first um, free series way back in January. Um, and yeah, obviously gone from there. And then after that, I, I become monetized. And so yeah, that, that means YouTube started paying me. And then I realized, hey, you know what? I can continue to do this on a larger scale because I can earn money from YouTube now. And, yeah, so it's literally a dream come true that I can do this work for people, but on a larger scale, so I'm still getting paid, you know? Um, there's absolutely nothing else I would rather be doing. Um, yeah, that, that'll be within my means. So yes, absolutely, I feel good doing it, and I have no plans to stop. And yeah, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? And this one's a little bit funny, and truth be told, I've never really given it much thought. That's from Brittany George. Uh, when you picture who you're talking to when you talk to the camera for this channel, what does the person slash people you're picturing look like? That's a that's an interesting question. Uh, I don't really have an answer for that one, to be honest. Um, I've, I've obviously done a lot of public speaking in my time. I, I used to give um, lessons to you know groups of sixty plus people, and you know that, that was my job for many years. So I'm, I'm, I don't know it's almost like a similar type of headspace is that I just picture a group of people 
kind of not before me, but you know, I'm picturing on their phone doing this, but lots of faces on it, but with no particular face in mind. A little bit hard to explain that one, but yeah, interesting question. This one's from Tristian Danker. I hope I said that right, mate. Uh, hey Sean, it's going to be big, but could you, but could there be a compilation of all the free cleanup mows? And also this question, how many side discharge victors do you have and do you prefer one over the other? So probably not going to do a comp compilation because you know, I have dozens of videos now. However, I do put them all in a playlist. So if you just want to hit, go on my um, channel homepage and check the playlist, you'll see all the, the overground cleanup playlists. Um, the second one, do I have preferred side discharge? Um, look, honestly, I don't. I, I like them all. You've seen my little yellow beast kind of go through some nasty business. I've got my old 550 that I used early on in the piece. I've got the, my big red one now that I've named Queen Victoria. And obviously my black one, um, which some people in the comments have called a hot knife, which I thought was pretty cool because it goes like a hot knife through butter. And look, I don't, I don't have a preference. I kind of just choose one that I think will be best suited to whatever job I'm doing on that particular day. This one from Mohammed Zulkifly. I hope I pronounced that one as well correctly, Mohammed. How old are you? How old do you think I am? No, I am 33. Anyway, ladies and gents, unfortunately, that is all I've got time for for this video. Um, like I said, there's a lot of questions in there and some of them were double up. So hopefully your question got answered even if I didn't address you directly. And if not, I do apologize and I wholeheartedly thank, thank you again for the support and for leaving your comment there. Like I said, I did read it and I really appreciate interest. Um, all the work I do and, and the plans I have for the future moving forward, I uh, absolutely can't do it without ongoing support from everyone who watches, likes, subscribes, comments on this channel. Um, yeah, it just wouldn't be an attainable goal. So, you know, big thanks and it means a lot to me. I'm absolutely overwhelmed. Every day I'll, I'll pause and I've got to think like I'm, I'm super lucky that somehow I have an audience and such a fantastic audience. I love chatting to you guys in the comments. I love the premieres. I always look forward to it. I call it premiere day when I get in the in the chat there and get to have a live chat with anyone who, who's able to tune in. Um, so yeah, thanks again, everyone, and I shall see you next time.